Hey guys, this is a little tutorial video I have for you today. Uh, it is going to be a guide to the best Liverpool tactics, or at least what I perceive to be the best Liverpool tactics. This is more of a uh, aimed at a novice slash beginner slash just above beginner uh, level. Because I'm getting a lot of messages lately about people saying, um, how, to, how do I play as Liverpool? Can you give me some hints? And I'm getting a lot lately. And uh, I just thought, you know, maybe this might be a good idea just to address it to everyone and, you know, put a video out there. What is the best Liverpool tactics? Now, in FM11, I did um, a My Liverpool Tactics video. Uh, and this is basically the same thing. I'm just going to change it a bit, you know, just sort of rearrange the um, sort of the wording, if you will. And sort of just say, this is what I see to be, well, it's, at least it's what's worked for me as the best Liverpool tactics on this, on this game. Now, um... I should point out, obviously, I'm now at the, time, at the time recording this into season, I think, 8 um, for this Liverpool save. So, obviously, the team is just completely different. Half this team is retired, or, or at least, you know, is in the coaching staff now. Uh, and, um, you know, you, you tend to sell on players very quickly, or players want to leave, or whatever. So, um, I can't honestly give an absolute... I cannot say for sure that this is going to work. Because every game is different. Um, every... To, you know, everyone sort of tweaks. You, you've got to tweak it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. You have to tweak it to fit your game, because, uh, for example, on my game, Tottenham got bought by a bunch of Iranian businessmen. So that means obviously they have a shitload of money in the same way as Manchester City would. Um, but on your game, for example, it could come down to Birmingham, because I remember one time uh, on mine, Birmingham also got taken over, um, and they, you know, they did really well. They got into the top five or six. Um, and then Corona left, which is quite funny. But uh, yeah, it was um, that, that type of thing can happen. So you do have to tweak it. You do have to alter it for every game. But this is for the starting team, the main eleven that we see now at the pitch on every game at Liverpool. This is what I think is the main tactics and the best formation, the best team, etc., etc. So let's get on with it. Um, I have the three main tactics here. I usually just stick with the, with the regular four four two. It does nothing wrong. I would always. If you don't really don't want to use this 442, then I'd advise it as like a fail save, as a backup, a real backup. You're really, really struggle, struggling. You don't know which tactic to use. You're all over the place. You try it all three or four. Just go with the regular 442. But I would recommend starting with it. Um, it's it you do become familiar with it fairly quickly if you put it to the workload. I would recommend over pre-season set it to high or very high. On not very. I, th I think I, I'm not absolutely sure. Someone will probably correct me on this. But I think the match preparation, this does alter how quickly familiar. Because a lot of people really do think over this. They think, okay, clearly we've lost three in a row. I'm going to change the tactics. No, the formation, that is not the best thing to do. Stick with a familiar formation because there's no point in changing. You're familiar with a 4-4-2, right? So that bar is now full, okay? If you change it to a 4-5-1 and the familiarity is that, as we can see here, they're not going to play as well. It's that, That's just common knowledge. So I would not recommend that. Stick with something you're familiar with. Or what you can do anyway is over the pre-season, set it to high or very high or even average if you want. And they will become familiar. And you will have uh, backup tactics here. And I, would, I cannot stress backup tactics enough. The game and the CPU will begin to learn your tactics eventually. And, um, you know, you will have to switch it up. And the two I usually go with, I always just say one. But the other one I always go with usually is this one this is a, a very it's a very strange one this is one i always recommend as a very alternative one if you're not going to go with a you know a 442 or a 451 um is the 4231 asymmetrical formation as you can see they're all a bit weird um i don't know i just sort of stumbled across this thought i just use it and honestly it's been the best alternative formation i've ever used i don't know why, <laughs> why it's just um certain people certain managers on this game don't know how to play it and if the team becomes familiar with it, then you know you're set. So, if you need a good alternative tactic, I would recommend that. If you don't happy with that, stick with the regular four five one, because that'll that'll do you happy. You know, this um, I, I can't fault this one. Whereas I say that would probably be my third option. The main one I'm going to stick with here is the four four two, just because it's simple, it's traditional, and you don't have to fiddle with a lot of things. So the team, uh, what is the best team? Now I usually go with sort of three areas with this. So let's take it on the 4-4-2. So obviously you're going to stick with Reina in goal. I would always recommend putting Reina in goal as Kenny does pretty much in every game. I don't think I've ever seen Donny or Brad Jones play for us so far. I don't think they've 
ever played, actually. I think I think only played once. Uh, unless you are playing someone like um, in League 1 or 2 or the, the Conference or whatever, in like the League Cup or the FA Cup, then, okay, maybe play Donny or Jones. But for the majority of games, just play Reina. It, it, the goalkeepers, the conditions that don't go down, they have a slight chance of being sent off. I mean, I say it's slight. I mean, it really is. I've never... I think... I've, I personally have never had a goalkeeper sent off. A few people have I've talked to, but it is fairly rare. Um, and then, so so I'm going to go th over the three. Now, firstly, I'll show you the, the best team. This is the best team. This is for the team if you're playing a big club like Chelsea, United, Arsenal, Tottenham, someone bit, or if you're in Europe, um, which will obviously be in Season 2. Uh, this is what I think you should put out. So, Glenn Johnson should be at right back. Uh, keep him as a fullback and automatic. Don't really have to, don't really have to alter any of these um, things out at the bottom. I wouldn't alter them just for the defenders. Keep them as they are. Um, then this is probably a choice. This is more. It depends who you're facing. And we have to go deeper, if you will. Um, who you're playing now? If you're playing someone like Real Madrid with pacey players like a Benzema, like a Higuain, like a Ronaldo, I would stick with Aga and Scale. If, however, you're not playing someone like that, but they still... But I would probably stick with them, because Carragher's pace isn't great. And especially if you are playing a top team, then I would go with Skelanger, because they have more pace than Carragher. I mean, I remember I was playing... Um, oh, I can't remember who it was. I think this also applies to a few other saves as well. I had a slow, old centre-back, and when there's a pacey forward, they get absolutely ripped to shreds, so just bear that in mind. Quartes and Danny Wilson, who is also in the reserves, they will come through eventually. Start to nurture them um, in probably the latter end of the first season. Start to bring them through in the second season. I'll get onto that in a minute. And then obviously we've got uh, Jose Enrique. Jack Robinson is also another one. I will talk about that. But this, as I say, is the main one. This is your main sort of team. Um, on the right, I would probably go with Jordan Henderson. Actually, no, I'd probably go... Yeah, no, Hen Henderson. Henderson... Bear in mind, he is good on this. Bellamy obviously doesn't... His form at the moment doesn't really come over in real life. If you uh, Sorry, onto the game, if you will. Um, so I would probably go with Henderson. Have him as a wide midfielder. Can change him to a winger if that doesn't work out. But um, yeah, I'd go with Henderson there. Gerrard and Charlie Adam. Uh, I wouldn't say him as defensive. I would say either support or automatic, but... What you will find with automatic, Adam will have a lot of shots from about sort of here, and it will get on your nerves. Trust me, he does get on your nerves. Uh, Gerard does that as well, but not as much. But Charlie Adam, there are players in this game, and Adam is one of them. When they get the ball, they will just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. And no matter what, in his playing instructions, I mean, you could say say, say to him now, if I go to his uh, playing instructions, ooh, not that one. If I go to playing instructions here um, and go to Charlie Adam. And then you go to show instructions, even if you say to him, long shots, rare, and you can tell him to, you know, run, run with the ball often, cross the ball often, whatever, it won't make a slightest bit of difference, he's still going to shoot all the time. So, just bear that in mind, just bear that in mind with Adam. If you don't like that, spearing is a good option, Maxi can play in the middle as well, but uh, and Bellamy even. But, um, yeah, I, I would go with that. And then, finally, Stuart Downing on the left. I know a lot of people are going to go, but Downing's crap at the minute. F forget what you know about real life. Just focus on this game, what their attributes are. I've seen players on this that are absolutely amazing on this game and are absolutely terrible in real life. For example, um, okay, this is taking it back a bit, 2000, FM 2006, Mario and Schumach grew up to be the best player on the game. I think we can all laugh at that. And then finally, obviously, Andy Carroll and Luis Suarez. Now, this is where I really would advise using these um, these roles. You have to see with Andy Carroll. If you let's take Carroll for example. If you go to his report and go to a position, this is thankfully something I've, I was taught <laughs> by uh, one of the comments. So thanks for that. Uh, and then you go to his position. This is what Steve Clark thinks is his best position and his best role. El a target man and attack so <coughs> excuse me if you go to target man there and attack you need to do the same thing for Suarez it should be a poacher oh no it's not <laughs> it's a oh it's for me it's a poacher now in uh, season 8 it's a bit weird <coughs> oh dear uh, so if you go to this one oh sorry about that so yeah we set to Suarez and Carol 
to uh, their positions. Gerard again, so I think you get the idea, just go to the report and all that, so that is arguably, and obviously you can choose the bench, it obviously it depends on injuries and so on, but um, yeah, I would say that is the best team, it really, that one's not too difficult, I'm sure you probably could have guessed that, but let's clear it. This would be, now this next team I'm going to show you is the one I'd pick for perhaps a sort of mid-table team, um, such, I don't know, Fulham for example, or um, I don't know, maybe, okay, let's, let's say middle and bottom end of the, of the Premier League, I'll, you know, Fulham, Bolton, Wigan, Blackburn, etc. I would still pick Rayner and goal. Kelly, it's always worth playing Martin Kelly. Rotating these is always worth it, because one or the other is obviously going to get pissed off that you're not playing them, and obviously they're going to moan at you, and once they start moaning, they will not shut up, seriously. You've got, to stop them shutting up, you've really got to play them like five or six, seven, eight, nine, ten games in a row. No matter what the condition is, it's like it's like you know. Okay, you want to play for me? You're going to work through this pain, kind of thing, you know. And um, I really would advise rotating them, not necessarily putting Johnson in one game, then Kelly, Johnson, Johnson, Kelly, Kelly, Johnson. I mean, just sort of go with the with the te with the team, see who's playing, and just stick with with it. Um, and then again, Car you know, Carragher's not that bad. He won't really moan if you really do play him. At all, like not at all. Like, I mean, he will eventually move, but he has a lot more patience than other players. Um, but Sebastian Quartes, I probably wouldn't use him in the first season. Maybe in the second season, start to bring him in. But actually, no, I'd probably start bringing him through about the second half of the first season because he is really good on this. But I would go with this one. I'd go with Carragher Naga or Scale. It really is your choice. Whoever has the better condition, rep morale and general rating, obviously, whoever's performed better in the season, I would go with them. And then, um, again, Jose Enrique, but that is with a, a point that you can bring through some of the players, and I will talk about that again in a minute. Uh, but I would stick with Jose Enrique for now. Uh, and then on the right, I would go with Maxi. Lu uh, I wouldn't... I, I mean, I talk about Charlie Adam, actually, in the previous one. Again, that is where the thing to say, Lucas also is a possibility. Uh, on on the other team, um, I will stick with Lucas on this, and also we're going to stick with Gerard again, and then Bellamy. But you know you can rotate. This is not an absolute solid team. Don't have to use this team. Rotate Adam, Lucas, and Gerard. They are, and maybe even Henderson. Henderson can play in the middle. Um, rotate them. I mean, that that is not a solid thing. That's just what I found to be the the best one. I mean, I never used Lucas very much in my Liverpool save. Um, I ended up selling him in like season two for twenty million. Atletico Madrid just came out of nowhere and put a massive bid in for him. I was like, "Oh, I'll have that. Go ahead, <laughs> go ahead." Um, and that's what I went with that. But uh, I'm going to go again, Carol and Suarez. But of course, this is to the point where you may buy other players now. Now, because this is on the twelve point two patch, which is the last patch, I believe, before FM thirteen. Um, then you, you, you know Liverpool's uh, actually. I'll show you that now. Initially, in the in the fair save. So, you barely got any money. You really didn't get much transfer. You got like two or three million transfer money. And it really was not big. But in this one, now, because um, it's it's the new patch, you get a load of money again. So you have 22 million. So on that basis now, with the game being patched and this after January patch, if you will, um, I would certainly say go ahead and buy some players. Now, obviously, I think that will be for another video. Um... But, you know, certainly that this is what I would recommend using as Suarez and Carroll in it. Um, I would recommend that as a team, most likely for a sort of bottom middle team. But obviously that is with due to certain other factors such as condition, morale and rating on your game. I cannot, as I say, I cannot be absolutely solid. Uh, and now for this one team, you probably won't, you'll probably use this maybe once, absolutely twice, three times a season, is when you're playing a very sort of low league, league one, league two conference team. I wouldn't recommend, I'd still recommend, even when you're playing championship opponents, um, using that sort of, the second team I just put out there, with uh, maybe bringing one or two players that players I'm about to bring now. Now, Jones and Doney, Doney's arguably the better goalkeeper, so I just go with him, I can't say much because I've never really seen him play. Um, I'd still with Kelly because he's fairly young on this. I mean, he's what he's twenty-one. Yeah, he's he's really good on this. I would I would play in this one Quartes. And if we go to the reserves, I'll show you some players that I really would recommend bringing through and through fairly quickly. John Flynn again. I'm pretty sure you know. Maybe send him on. I actually, would recommend um, 
putting him on loan. He is available for loan. As you see, he is wanted, and I think that may be um, possible for every game now. I would recommend getting him some first-team experience. He's 18. I would go to off the clubs for a loan. That you just keep with his wages, and he'll get some first-team experience at Norwich. So he'll come back far more experienced. There you go. Uh, Jack Robinson, absolutely bring through. Maybe send him on loan again, but he's a good one to put through. Shelby is another one. Bring straight through. Suso, not yet. Don't bring him through yet, but in Season 2, definitely bring him through. Um, Nathan Eccleston, maybe. Getting on a bit, a bit old now, but still consider him. Uh, where is Wilson? Oh, he's actually... Oh, he's on loan. I forgot. He's actually on loan at Blackpool. Right. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to have to redo that one then. <laughs> Stick with Carragher. But when you get to Season 2, swap him out for Wilson. Just because if it's because Wilson needs first-team experience, he needs to play in the first team. He's on loan at the moment, and he will come back a better player. So, um, yeah... You can have Carragher or Wilson, but I would recommend Wilson in that point. But he's on loan, that's for season two. Um, and then finally, left back, Robinson. Um, then at right back, uh, sorry, at right midfield, I would get in, go, in, go with Maxi, Spearing, and then Shelby. And finally, either Bellamy, or if we go to the reserves once again, um, maybe if you want, you could throw in Tony Silva or Nathan Eccleston. Uh, but I personally would just go with Bellamy because it's just easier or maybe even Cal, you know, you can swap Maxi over this side or Bellamy can play there or Cal can play there, you know, bear in mind you can mix and match, just see if the green or the light green are okay to play there and then again you can throw Nathan Eccleston or uh, any of the other young lads here in the reserves, don't go into the under 18s yet, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that um, you know, you can possibly recall Danny Pacheco if you want Bijev I think is his name I've not seen enough of this guy, guy yet Ingu's a bit young, uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, what to do with Cole and Aquilani? I'd sell them, if I'm going to be honest. Cole, for me, stayed another season and then eventually managed to get rid of him, but I would not really keep him around for long, to be honest. So, anyway, there you go. That is my local tactics there. Uh, they are the main ones. In terms of um, team instructions, now... I usually just stick with standard or control. Very rarely go attacking. They will become familiar with the strategy itself being attached to it. So obviously, if it's if if you say control, there that's stuck on control. They will become familiar with it as control. And then you set it back to standard. They won't be as familiar with it. So just bear that in mind. Um, so I would stick with standard usually, but bear in mind the control is not that bad either. Don't go attacking too often. Counter only when you're against the big clubs and perhaps you're holding a lead or holding a good result that you want. In terms of philosophy, I very rarely mess with philosophy. I really not found much use for it, so I just keep it balanced. Uh, in terms of penalty takers and captains and so on, I think we all know, really, it's fairly... Yeah, to be honest, your backroom staff will tell you this. So for example, if you say meet your staff, your first backroom advice meeting, you'll get through all this here. Uh, you know, you, you've got scouts recommending players such as Nilmar here, and then you'll have Stuart Downing on free kicks, Adam, Aurelio, Adam, and so on. Uh, Fabio Aurelio, I would not really stick with him too often. You, you'll probably end up selling him fairly quickly. I mean, he's another player to throw in, but I wouldn't really stick with him personally. He's good, but he won't last a season or two, really. He's two seasons at the absolute most. And then don't forget, of course, you have your... Um, new signings to bring in as well. <laughs> Playing Barcelona in a pre-season friendly, that's a bit weird. And I think that really is about it. So, um, yeah, so if you have any more questions, then please just ask them in the comments. Um, if this is, if people like this and people really think uh, they want to see more, I can do a few more. Please don't ask me to do other clubs, um, such as, you know, like Arsenal or Chelsea or City or whatever. I've never played them, so I don't really know the tactics. Well, then the other, other two I could do, so if you guys want to see the other two, are Southampton and Cardiff. I could do them too, otherwise I, can't, I don't really know how to do any more. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that that's really about it. So, um, thanks for watching, lads. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, give the video a like, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.